Just ahead on CTB News, another car meetup becomes deadly. Plus, U.S. Senate candidate Angela Alsobrooks receives another endorsement. Well, the summer is officially upon us and you're probably thinking about planning that next vacation. If you've got a lower travel budget this year or you're just looking for a quick getaway, why not check out a great location right here in the county? I'm Mariah Jalad. I've got that story coming up on CTV News. Those stories and more on CTV News up next. Good evening, this is CTV News for Friday, June 14th. I'm Gina Barti. And I'm Katera Jones. Thanks for joining us. Another deadly car meetup happened late last night. Detectives were still at the scene where bloodstains and debris left were, were left on the scene in the parking lot at the Manakeek Shopping Center in Akakeek. Police say when they arrived, they found two men suffering from gunshot wounds who later died at the scene. A third victim took himself to a nearby hospital and is in stable condition. CTV spoke to a resident who wanted to remain off camera, but said the community has been complaining to police about the meetups for a long time. This is a quiet community. You know, we don't, we didn't pay money to live here to deal with that type of nonsense. But we complained and complained for a moment they had a sign posted over there, no car meetups allowed. And then two weeks later, the sign was gone and the car meetup was taking place again. So, you know, we feel as though it's, it's, it's the, the lack of professionalism and competence of a police force that was right here and could have fined the causes, I think, I believe it's $1,000 per car per fine, and they did nothing. And two people could still be alive one person, I think a third person got shot. That person didn't have to go through that. They leave trash everywhere that you can see. So there's no responsibility on the people who come here from other areas because they don't care. Police have not identified any suspects and motive in the case. Anyone with information is asked to contact Prince George's County Crime Solvers at 1-866-411-TIPS. U.S. Senate candidate Angela Alsobrooks receives an endorsement from a union group based in Lanham. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, known as IBEW Local 26, endorses Alsobrooks for U.S. Senate. The local union represents electricians throughout the Washington metro region. The group also provides hands-on technical training through an apprenticeship program to people who want to join the profession. I'm so honored to be here today with uh, IBEW and all of the locals who represent the hardworking men and women um, of, our, of our state. Uh, these are the families we talk about when we talk about economic opportunity, how to grow it, um, how to protect workers, uh, to make sure that we're growing benefits and growing salaries and allowing people to afford the cost of living. What, what we take is young people and uh, we give them a path to the middle class. It's, it's, it's an apprenticeship, which means uh, school time, on-the-job training and job placement. And right now it's a great time to be an electrician. Also Brooks, a Democrat, is running against Republican Larry Hogan to be Maryland's next U.S. Senator. Former President Donald Trump endorses Larry Hogan for Maryland's U.S. Senate race, a move that could greatly affect Hogan as he tries to win the Democrat majority state. Trump told reporters Thursday when it comes to Hogan's run, he supports the Republican Party and wants to take the majority in the Senate. And he'd like to see Hogan win. Hogan has been a longtime critic of Trump and did not vote for the former president in the last two presidential elections. While the endorsement could influ influence Trump voters to support Hogan, it may not be a good sign for undecided voters. A recent poll by Gonzalez Research and Media says 61 percent of Marylanders say they disapprove of Trump. A U.S. citizen with diplomatic status is facing federal charges for the alleged sexual abuse of two minors. 39-year-old Fode Mara is facing five counts of aggravated sexual abuse of a minor, one count of coercion and enticement, and one count of obstruction of justice. Mara was employed at the U.S. Embassy in West Africa, where he befriended a family with two children ages 13 and 15 at the time. 
It is alleged that Mara groomed, coerced, and sexually abused the two victims for a year. Mara made a court appearance, court appearance earlier this week in Greenbelt. If convicted, he faces a minimum 30 years and a maximum life sentence in federal prison. A bill that would increase protections for judges passes the U.S. Senate. The countering threats and attacks on our Judges Act would establish a state judicial threat intelligence and resource center to monitor threats against states and local judges. Senator Ben Cardin, who is a sponsor of the bill, referred back to Circuit Court Judge Andrew Wilkinson, who was assassinated at his home in Washington County last year. Cardin says the national legislation would better protect judges and their families. Earlier this year, the Maryland General Assembly passed a law in Wilkinson's honor that protects judges' personal information from being published. Well, a new center for young adults that have aged out of foster care opens in the county. The Youth Experiencing Success Center, or YES Center, serves former foster kids aged 18 to 26. The center provides employment assistance, housing and health services, mentoring and clothing and hygiene items. Every day I hear foster care cases and youth who age out of the foster care system. And a lot of times they don't know where they're going to live, they don't have a job, they are not in school. And so it's really hard to try to encourage them when there's little hope. So the opening of this guest center, Youth Experience and Success Center, means that they will have a place to come, a place where they can get services and support. The center will be open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays. For more information, you can visit the website on your screen. An update from the National Weather Service doubles the original tornado count that ripped through our region on June 5th. The service issued 29, 22 tornado warnings on June 5th, the fourth most in one day since 1986. The total count jumps from six to 13 tornadoes overall. The tornado that touched down in Carroll County had the highest peak wind gusts of 110 miles per hour, and the Gaithersburg tornado reached peak wind gust of 95 miles per hour. Five people suffered injuries due to the storm in Montgomery County, one of them with serious injuries. Maryland lawmakers just announced a $1.3 million project to make a local mark station more accessible for people with disabilities. The College Park Mark Station will feature new 600 feet low level platforms that will make boarding and departing safer for disabled passengers. The funding comes from the U.S. Department of Transportation's All Stations Accessibility Program. The initiative will also help further support the plan to connect the College Park Mark Station to WMATA and the future Purple Line. You're watching CTV News, still to come. The temps are going to get high out there, you guys. We have tips to help you keep cool today and throughout the summer. We'll be back in a moment. The threat of child online exploitation has never been bigger. In the 20 years I've been working, I've never seen this many leads come in. We see that taking different forms, but essentially it's when an adult offender is targeting a juvenile in the online or digital environment with the ultimate goal of some sort of sexual victimization. People don't know that this crime is happening at such an alarming rate because it is uncomfortable to talk about. Bringing it to the forefront can help prevent the crime from happening in the first place. One of the things that we always want parents to understand is predators go where the kids are. In the past, playgrounds, parks, public places, that's where offenders would go. Now, the digital environment is the playground for these kids. The Know to Protect campaign will educate and empower children, teens, parents, trusted adults, and policymakers to prevent and combat online child sexual exploitation and abuse. It's never too late to start talking about this threat with kids and teens in your life. Taking a few simple steps can prevent your child from becoming the next victim. Join us and visit knowtoprotect.gov to learn more about what you can do to prevent online child exploitation and abuse. Everyone has a ritual, that small thing that keeps us focused. 
a habit we never skip to clear our minds and elevate our performance. But what do you do to keep your head in the game, to drown out the self-doubt and to support your mental health? Because being your best isn't just about taking care of your body. It's about taking care of your mind and mental health. Discover the resources you need to keep your mind focused and your mental health a priority. Welcome back. If you are a smoker, listen up. Starting July 1st, tax is ta excuse me, taxes on cigarettes, tobacco products, and electronic smoking devices are set to increase. A pack of cigarettes will jump from $3.75 per pack to $5 per pack. Vaping products, including the vape liquid, is set to increase by 8% on the device and product sales and use tax. Tax rates are unchanged for cigars and pipe tobacco, as well as vaping liquid in a container of 5 milliliters or less. More than 600 doctors at the University of Maryland Medical Center vote to form a union, the first of its kind in the state. The group is composed of resident physicians and fellows at the hospital's two campuses in Baltimore. Organizers for the union say it will fight for higher wages and improved benefits. Before the vote, the group had public support from the Baltimore of from Baltimore Brandon Scott and the city council members. TEDCO announces its new executive director for its Maryland Innovation Initiative. Meet H.B. Shek Kulshi Reshtha, who formerly served as the company's chief business officer for Southern Research. The former chief business officer worked with over 200 patients and will take over as executive director starting July 1st. MII promotes commercialization of research for five of Maryland's academic research institutions, including the University of Maryland College Park. MII also has a pilot program that works with Bowie State University. Climate proje projections indicate that extreme heat events will become more frequent and intense in coming decades, with today being the hottest day of the year so far, with a reported high of 91 degrees. The Prince George's County Department of Parks and Recreation wants to remind residents of the cooling centers that are available. So this summer we have uh, 22 cooling centers throughout Prince George's. Right now we're standing in one of them, the Sports and Learning Complex in Landover. Uh, the hours are at least 12 to 6, but earlier and later on some days. Um, if we do have several days of extreme heat over 90 degrees, we may open all of our facilities um, to allow folks the chance to get some water, to cool off, um, and then continue about their day. If it's over 90 degrees and there's a risk of heat stroke or heat exhaustion, uh, we do encourage you to come in. We've got uh, vending machines, restrooms available, chairs, benches, uh, water bottles, um, or water bottle filling stations. Um, so we encourage you to come and take advantage of that service. We do encourage folks on holidays like Juneteenth or July 4th to call in advance. Um, to your local facility to check what their hours may be. Uh, but you can find out where all of our 22 cooling centers are located at pgparks.com. We want to remind everyone to stay hydrated as we take on these summer days and the centers have two hour cooling periods per person so everyone gets a chance to cool down. Well, a new report shows which states are the best and worst tippers. Toast, a digital restaurant platform, analyzed tipping data from businesses that use the platform. The report indicates that a total tip averaged about 18.9% nationwide in quarter one of this year. Residents in Delaware tipped the most, and the state ranks first at tipping at full-service and quick-service restaurants. However, California has the worst tippers. Here in Maryland, the average tipping rate is about 19.60 percent. Good for us. Still to come on CTV News, whether you're interested in taking a vacation or staycation, find out where you can go in the county for a quick getaway. Stay tuned. Okay, now that's going places. I want to go places too. I know you do, buddy. Good night. I love you. And I want you to have more opportunities than I had. I 
found a place. So I would live in Hershey, Pennsylvania? Yeah, but you'll live with other students and a house parent couple too. I wonder what the other kids will be like. They'll be from all over the country. And some are a lot like you. <laughs> I'll be able to discover what's next for me. I would come visit, and you can come home to visit too. Can we apply? Hey, I've got good news. Discover a path to receiving an exceptional educational experience with all costs covered. I'll see you soon. You're gonna be great. Find your future at Milton Hershey School. A biosimilar is a type of biologic medication. Just like brand name drugs have generic versions, original biologics can have biosimilars. And as with generics, biosimilars can be made by multiple companies. To be approved by the FDA, studies must show that the biosimilar is not expected to have any new or worsening side effects as compared to the original biologic. The result is more medication options at potentially more competitive prices. Welcome back. Montgomery County has a new representative in the General Assembly, and she's a familiar face to her constituents. Sarah Love, a Democrat, was sworn in to the Maryland Senate yesterday. Love will serve District 16, which was left vacant by former Senator Ariana Kelly, who left to lead the Maryland Commission for Women. Love is no stranger to the General Assembly. In fact, she has been serving in the Maryland House of Delegates since 2019 before being elevated to the Senate. Well, if you're planning some summer travel and your passport expires soon, then we have some good news for you. The State Department has reopened its online passport renewal portal. The service is available to a limited number of travelers who meet certain requirements. For now, the program is only available for routine renewals and not exp expedited services. Current routine passport processing times are about six to eight weeks. In-person expedited passports should take up to about three weeks. However, expect some extra fees. We wanted to remind everyone that the county animal shelter is back open after temporarily closing due to an outbreak of strep zoe in some of the dogs. You will now be able to adopt this, that furry, scaly, or even flying friend you've always wanted. Owner surrender appointment, appointments will remain suspended until further notice. When you think of summer travel, you might be dreading that airport experience, waiting in long lines in those tight seats, but you can have fun in the sun this year without ever stepping foot on a plane. In fact, you won't even have to leave the county. CTV's Mariah Jalad is visiting a nearby favorite. I'm checking out all the great activities at the Gaylord National, your perfect staycation destination this summer, including these awesome jet cars. So let's take it for a spin. Hey. You know, we are the staycation destination here in the DMV. What makes up a good vacation for anybody is going to be having great food, having great entertainment, and being able to relax. And those are all things that you can get right here at the resort without even having to leave our property, which is what makes it uh, so great. It's also so close for people. Located in southern Prince George's, right along the Potomac River, the National Harbor is an all-inclusive and ever-exciting place to be. And if you're looking for a place to stay, the Gaylord is making county residents especially welcome. We are offering special room rates for Prince George's County residents, specifically for DMV residents as a whole. It's going to be up to 30% off for room rates. And so that's going to be really exciting and just to make it more affordable for people to come out and to spend their time here at Gaylord National. Now you've got the great room with the great view. What are you going to fill that trip itinerary with? Gaylord National has a well-deserved reputation for offering really unique activities and experiences, especially for families. And this summer is no different. Uh, we'll start with our adventure kids, hunt for the hidden treasure. Our beautiful atrium actually becomes an area you can explore looking for clues and 
and hidden gems that all add up to a wonderful prize at the end of the exploration. And it's a great opportunity for families to get together and, and have fun solving puzzles and, and deciphering clues to make their way to the end of the scavenger hunt. Plus a light show, a spa, breweries and wineries, and that's just indoors. Now, I don't know if you can see the jet cars behind me right now. That is one of our exciting new features that we've got this summer, and you can do multiple things with them, right? You can take them for a leisure ride with a certified captain if you don't have a boating license. Other than having the leisure ride with them, they also will take you on a tour or through the Potomac, you get to go see Old Town Alexandria, Mount Vernon, and all of that. And that's just a really exciting, interesting way to see and tour around the nation's capital. You can even take a class and learn how to take the jet cars out for a spin yourself. And after a day like that, you'll work up an appetite and get to check out some restaurants like the newly updated Old Hickory. So for those staying at the hotel this summer, what can they expect when they come to dine here? Um, so they, they can expect fine dining right here in National Harbor, um, all made to order food. We have our Sunday brunch, which is a prefix offering from 1030 to 130 every Sunday. And it features some of our local specials, as well as a 16% discount for all DMV residents. To start with our skinny dipper oysters from right here in the Chesapeake, as well as a local charcuterie board featuring Chapel Blue Cheese, which is made right here in the Eastern Shore as well as uh, a fresh entree of your choice from our short rib hash to our steak sandwich, a lot of wonderful food. And every guest gets two complimentary welcome cocktails when they check in. When you're ready to book your stay, you can visit GaylordNational.com and don't forget to take advantage of those great resident discounts they'll be running all summer until Labor Day. From the National Harbor, I'm Mariah Gillad, CTV News. Okay, I think we're a little jealous, huh? Yeah, I love the cars and the water. Oh, that would be a good, yeah. that looks like a cool date night type of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. a little scary. We'll <laughs> see. Lucky Mariah. Anyways, <laughs> Simon Bugs is ne up next with Friday Sports Page. That's right, he's speaking to players down at the Commander's Mini Camp. Simon? Hey everyone, and coming up on your Friday Sports Page, Commander's offensive lineman Brandon Coleman shares how minicamp has gone for him and the UMD men's basketball non-conference schedule is revealed. Those stories and more coming right up. Stay tuned. For decades, I've taught you everything I know. How to safely build a fire. How to control the flames. What to do with hot coals. How to secure your chains. But I can only teach wildfire prevention. Only you can prevent wildfires. My daughter Natalie was diagnosed with stage four neuroblastoma. She was my only daddy's girl. When I walked in the door, she was the first one to run and give me a hug. By the time we realized that she was sick, it had grown into about a, a softball-sized tumor and spread through her bone marrow, her lymph nodes. We thought we were losing our daughter, and then when we came to St. Jude, everything changed. I see these massive jumps in what can happen for children and families from the work that's being done here at St. Jude. And we have doctors here who are working on that research right now. I hope they can keep going and keep doing the research and keep advancing all the treatments so that kids don't have to deal with this anymore. At St. Jude, there was hope. Hope changes everything.
sports fans get pumped because it's time for your Friday sports page. Beginning with some high school hoops news, the summer league is a good period for a team to get better at a lot of aspects of the game. And that's no different for the DeMatha High School boys basketball squad. Whether it be on the offensive or defensive side of the ball, the Stags are going to do whatever they can to make sure they're the best team they can be. I recently caught up with head coach Mike Jones and small forward Charles Thomas III, and they touched on what they wanted to get better at during the summer. We just want to improve at the little things, you know, off, uh, defensive rebounding, especially on the backside, keeping your man in front, not giving up straight line drives. And then on the offensive end, playing for each other, playing together, having great ball movement, body movement. If we can do those little things at a high level, we're going to be successful. Communication, we got to harp on like the little things in communication. It'll help us a lot in rotations. It won't have a lot of um, mishaps on defense, you know, box outs, rebounds, all that. Now to the world of college hoops. Good news, Terps fans. The men's basketball non-conference schedule for the 2025 season has been announced. The season will open up on November 4th against Manhattan, and the first month of the season includes matchups against Mount St. Mary's, Florida A&M, Canisius, and Bucknell. And in December, Maryland will host Alcorn State, St. Francis, and UMES. For more information on the turf schedule, visit the website on your screen. Meantime, a position that will look to be better next season is the offensive line for the Washington Commanders. And one player that is hoping to make an impact is rookie Brandon Coleman out of TCU. The team recently wrapped up their mandatory minicamp and Coleman touched on what he prided himself on during it. The way that I come out here every day is just getting 1% better. Um, I know there are expectations and things that I have for myself and people have for me, and all I can do is work every day, which I do. Obviously, there are things that you can work on. You see in practice, knocking off rust, all that stuff, and seeing things that yet may have not seen at the other level. So it's been a great experience to see what I can add to my toolbox and what I can improve on. And guys on the defensive line have been helpful too, showing me what they do and then talking me through it, you know, the vets. So it's been great and really like this insightful seeing what I can improve on and then taking that to the season. Coleman also talked about how close the offensive linemen are. I mean, one thing that I can describe as offense line is just like brotherhood. You know, everybody looks out for each other, makes sure everybody's on the same page, and we're out there, communication is great. And then also just the way we attack every practice, you know, make sure everybody's on the same speed, making sure everybody works hard, and nobody's slacking off. Everybody knows what they want and is determined to get it. Now for some minor league baseball news, the Bowie Baysocks continue their series versus the Harrisburg Senators tonight. The two teams will face off at 7 o'clock. And the Bay Sox Major League affiliate, the Baltimore Orioles, begin a new series tonight. The Birds will take the diamond against the Philadelphia Phillies at 7.05. And wrapping up sports, a new NBA champion could be crowned tonight, basketball fans, as the Boston Celtics will look to sweep the Dallas Mavericks in Game 4 of the NBA Finals. Tip-off is at 8.30. And that wraps up your Friday sports page. Simon Bucks, CTV Sports. Let's get a look at our three-day weather forecast. Tonight will reach a high of 91, but tonight we can expect some showers and thunderstorms before 2 a.m. Saturday is going to be nice and sunny. We're looking at a high of 84 and a low of 61. Sunday will also be nice. We're looking at a high of 83 and a low of 60 Sunday, 67. Monday will be sunny and clear with a high of 92. Let's take a look at our community calendar. The Greenbelt Community Center is hosting a racial justice essay and creative arts student award ceremony. Topics will include housing discrimination, voting rights, and the school to prison pipeline. The event takes, takes place tomorrow from 1 to 3 p.m. in room 201. For more information, just call that number on your screen. And that wraps up CTV News for now. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Good night.